Hi, my name is John. I'll be going over some of the integrals of some uh, basic trigonometric functions and integration of those. Okay, we're going to integrate some basic trigonometric functions. Um, the cosecant of 2x dx integral of cosine of t over 1 plus sine of t the cosecant cute of t over the cotangent of t secant tangent over 1 uh, secant of x minus 1 and the last one is the secant of t plus the tangent of t dt uh, we're going to be doing these five this one is a little bit rather difficult so um, I was going to leave this to the last one but uh, I had to look up reference for this one a little bit to try to figure out how it was worked. It's not that difficult once you get it. There's a leap of faith on this problem that we're going to be going over. Okay, so I hope you got this paused and, and if any one of these questions are your type of questions, I'll probably help you. Even if they're not, you're going to learn how to do integrals of basic trigonometric functions. There's much more harder ones, but uh, we're going to go over the basic easy ones first. Okay, this is for capitalist AB. Let me start that down. It's for capitalist AB students. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, before we get started though, oh, you already know some of these. Uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, for those of you teachers that don't know how to teach very well, um, and you don't have these down yet, the derivative sign is cosine. The der derivative cosine is negative sine sine, cosine, they're co-functions. Cosine, negative. So you notice there's a negative right here. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So the co-function, co-function. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of cosecant, which is the co-function, is co negative cosecant, cotangent. So if you memorize these three, the derivative of sine will give you cosine. The tangent, secant squared, secant, cosecant, cotangent. So the derivative of the cosecant is negative cofunction is cosecant, negative cofunction is cotangent. There it is. So memorize the first three, the rest comes in as a cofunction. Sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent. So we have that down. We also need some more information. We have to know the reciprocal functions. Uh, sine of x is equal to 1 over um, cosecant of x or cosecant of x is equal to the reciprocal which is 1 over sine of x I like to use this s right in the middle that's how I know it's going to be the sine function the reciprocal of the cosine function is equal to 1 over uh, the secant function or the secant function is equal to the reciprocal which is 1 over cosine. I like to use a C right in the back. There's only one C here where there's, there, there's uh, cosecant, sorry. Where there's two C's here, there's only one C here. So the, that stands for the cosine right there. And of course, the tangent of X is equal to 1 over cotangent of X. So these are the um, we only have five of them. One sine Co, uh, sine cosecant, cosine cosecant, tangent cotangent. Of course, the reciprocal of the cotangent, excuse me, is equal to 1 over the tangent of x, the reciprocal functions. So, armed with, it, armed with this information, we're going to try to do this first problem. The first problem was a little bit difficult. Like I said, uh, I had to reference it. Number one, it's the integral of the cosecant of 2x dx and that's what we're looking for uh, try to figure this out the cosecant function is the reciprocal so I tried 1 over sine of 2x that becomes I used to double angle 1 over 2 sine of x cosine of x try to take the integral of that 1 half comes out you end up with some really bad things to work out on dx here you see that uh, it didn't work out really well, so I had to reference the book. Uh, we're going to make a leap of faith on this. That's the same thing as the cosecant of 2x times 
cosecant of 2x minus cotangent of 2x divided by cosecant of 2x minus cotangent of 2x dx. What I, did, what I did was I multiplied by cosecant of 2x minus cotangent 2x to the numerator and the denominator. It naturally cancels out to cosecant 2x. So this, the first expression on the left, is the same expression as one on the bottom right here. That's the leap of faith. And the reason why I did that is very simple. Cosecant squared, cosecant cotangent. There it is. The derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent negative. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Wow. Okay, so let's work it out. Um, let's get that if I have it right. So far, because I worked it out in the back somewhere. Um, yep, okay, I got it right so far. And so we distribute this out in the numerator. That becomes integral of cosecant squared of 2x minus uh, cosecant of 2x times cotangent of 2x, all divided by cosecant of 2x minus cotangent of 2x dx. Now at this stage, we're going to take the uh, use the u substitution. We're going to let u equal cosecant of 2x minus cotangent of 2x. Now when you take the derivative of that, that becomes the derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent negative cosecant of 2x times 1 half that's the chain portion, I'm sorry, times 2 that's the chain portion times the derivative of the inside uh, sorry, that becomes negative cosecant of 2x times cotangent of 2x times 2, sorry, that's the chain portion, my bad, so it should have actually been in the back, minus, and then you have the derivative of a cotangent is going to be negative, so it's going to be plus cosecant squared of 2x times 2, we're going to clean that up a little bit, that becomes cosecant squared of 2x, 2 times that, there's a 2 in the front, we're going to bring the 2 out, minus 2 cosecant of 2x times the cotangent of 2x, and I forgot to multiply everything by dx right here. So we kind of got this dx, excuse me, we kind of got this dx right over here. We got a negative cosecant and cotangent right there, you got a cosecant 2x, we're going to factor out the 2, 2, and then that same thing, dx. Now that's equal to du, that same thing is that top right there, how to get rid of the 2, multiplied by 1 half. So it becomes, that becomes now, we're going to block it out right there, integral of one half comes out to the front and then that becomes du over and cosecant of 2x cotangent 2x was u and we know how to find the integral of that that's pretty simple the integral of 1 over u du is the same thing as natural log so that becomes one half natural log of the absolute value of u, which was cosecant of 2x minus cotangent of 2x plus constant because it's an indefinite integral and there's a short solution. So the leap of faith was located right over here. I would have never known how to do that. I had to reference the book to figure out how that was done. Okay, next problem. The second question is Question number two is pretty simple. Integral of cosine of t over one plus sine of t, dt. 
And we're going to do a straight out substitution. You're going to let u equal 1 plus sine of t right over here. Then the derivative of that will be cosine of t, so it's a straight integral. So we're going to let u equal 1 plus sine of t. So du, when you take the derivative of that, equals the, the derivative of a constant is 0, the derivative of sine is cosine of t dt. There it is, right there. We're going to substitute that with du in the numerator and u in the denominator. And that becomes the natural log of u, which becomes natural log of u, which was 1 plus the sine of t plus c. Don't forget to put the absolute value around it because you want, you cannot take the natural log of a negative number. The natural log of a negative number is an imaginary number, by the way. So you can't do that. Number three. We're going to integrate cosecant cubed of t divided by cotangent of t dt. It seems to be a really difficult problem of uh, cosine cubed of t over the cosine, um, cosecant cubed of t over the cotangent of t. Um, I have to massage the inside a little bit. Let's rewrite the inside in terms of sines and cosine. We know that this is the reciprocal for the sine function. So it becomes 1 over sine cubed of t divided by the cotangent is the cosine of t over the sine of t. It's a, this, is called, this is called a, what is that called? Uh, what kind of fraction? Oh, uh, complex fraction, sorry, it's complicated. So we multiply by the reciprocal sine of t over cosine of t. We multiply by the reciprocal. One of the, t's, uh, one of the sine of t's cancel, you end up with, um, this becomes um, 1 over sine squared of t times 1 over cosine of t. Hmm. That's not the way I did it. Let me see. Let's look at this problem right over here. Cosine of t divided by 1 plus sine of t. Oh, we did that. Cosecant squared. Ah. Uh, is that a cubed or a squared? I'm looking at this problem. It's cosecant squared. Sorry about that. This problem right here should have been cosecant squared. Okay. So this should have been squared right there. This should have been squared right there. And so this should have been sine of t. That becomes 1 over sine of t times 1 over cosine of t. That becomes the secant of, uh, cosecant, excuse me, 1 over sine is cosecant of t times the cosine of t. 1 over cosine of t is the secant of t, dt. Well, at this stage right over here, We've seen this before, or let's keep it this way. This is a little bit easier. Uh, that's equal to 1 over the sine of t times the cosine of t. If I multiply by 2 to the numerator, and then multiply by 2 to the denominator, that becomes 